okay so today we will uh, uh, discuss the uh, solution of the midterm exam first and then i will give uh, a review of simon's algorithm so let me start by sharing my screen Okay. So I have a midterm exam in front of me and I'll be reading questions from there. So So the midterm ka pehla question ka So this was, what do you think is the uh, major source of, uh, you know, computational power of quantum computers? Apologies, I forgot to write computational because I assumed that uh, if it is written source of power, so it's understood that we are talking about computational power, but uh, uh, it doesn't mean the electric power. So I'm talking about the source of, you know, uh, quantum advantage or quantum speed up. And uh, most of you have rightly guessed that uh, it's the superposition. The ability of quantum computer to process data in superposition, that is, you know, uh, sort of at the heart of uh, uh, the, the strength or, or the computational speed up that quantum computer has over uh, the classical, you know, computer. So the second question was uh, that uh, why bernstein wazirani algorithm is important in showing uh, the power of uh, quantum computers more so uh, than the dgl diet shows algorithm and uh, uh, most of you have rightly guessed that it is because that diet diet's problem which is you know guessing uh, that a function is whether uh, constant or balanced uh can be solved by a probabilistic classical computer in uh, you know uh, polynomial number of iteration instead of exponential uh, number of iteration or queries of the function which is required for exact solution so even though quantum computer does give an exponential speed up over uh, uh, a classical solution that is looking for exact solution but the speed up over a probabilistic classical computer is not much so that's why bernstein wazirani algorithm gives a clear cut you know quantum speed up over even a probabilistic quantum computer because uh, uh, you cannot you know uh, guess a string uh, the secret bit string that the function you know is multiplying the input with uh, even you know uh, with with few queries using a class uh, using a probabilistic computer probabilistic classical computer than a deterministic classical computer. The second uh, question was the second, uh, the third part of the first question was what's the main application of teleportation on a quantum computer? So uh, the teleportation, you know, is essentially the transfer of uh, a state from one qubit to another so when we are talking about uh, communication this is important to communicate data if you want to you know send information from here to there uh, using quantum mechanical channel you are sending the quantum state but on a quantum computer the the main reason that we use teleportation is uh, that we have you know a physical qubit and uh, the physical hardware you know allows let's say uh, the entangling operation only between physically adjoining qubits so for example if you want to perform a c in a cx between this and this qubit you can do it so first you will have to transfer let's say this qubit somewhere close to this and then perform the entangling operation or other you know multi-qubit gate so teleportation is important for quantum computer uh, because hardware doesn't allow usually uh, entangling operations between all the qubits. So only few adjoining qubits uh, can be entangled. Uh, and that means that the, the gates like control X, control Z, and so on, 
can only be performed between few qubits. So you can use teleportation protocol to transfer qubit state from one to another position. So that's one, you know, uh, main application of teleportation for uh, quantum computers. So let me stop here and ask if there is any question here. If not, so let's now get to problem number two. This was, you know, uh, a problem that uh, many students struggled with. And it was a problem related to Oracle design. And I want to address this, uh, you know, problem in detail because this appears again and again in uh, several algorithms. So uh, Oracle, if you know, you recall is, uh, is a circuit like this, that uh, you have, let's say, uh, a part of the algorithm that takes as input certain number of qubits. And then it gives at the output the same uh, input. So the first thing that you have to make sure whenever you are designing a qubit, not to disturb these input states, because they have to go all the way to the output as it is. So that's number one thing that you have to keep in mind. Now the second thing is this, that if you're, you're designing a phase oracle, so for phase oracle, if this is your auxiliary uh, uh, input uh, state, let's say there are M uh, bit input and let me call it some B. So these, you know, will be acted upon. So there are operations that are going to be performed on these qubits and they are auxiliary qubits. Now for phase oracle, what we do that we have, first of all, M is equal to one, that we have one qubit over which we are going to perform the operations. And the second is that this state needs to be prepared in the minus state, which means that if we start from zero, as for example, in Kiskit, we should always perform first X and then head a mark to transform this into minus state. But before we do any operation on these qubits, this state has to be in this state. And the reason is this, that when we perform some operation on this minus state, then this, you know, a CX operation on this one transforms into either minus state or plus, depending on the control. If control is zero, you get plus. If control is one, you get minus, which is, you know, equal to minus one raised to power some function f of x minus. So you see, this operation is appearing as power of minus one. So that's why it's called a phase oracle. And now since this is coming at the output as it is, our total output, total input, this one is transformed to, you know, something like this. And since this is a global phase can be considered with this or this, so since this is, you know, appearing as it is, and we are working with this, this is equivalent to saying like this. So that's why phase oracles are implemented like this, that you've set this input bit in minus state, and then you perform different operations on this with respect to this, uh, these qubits. Now there can be some other intermediate you know, auxiliary qubits that you might have in certain, you know, uh, state. And uh, the key is that whatever the state you start from here, you should end up with the same state. If you, let's say these input bits are set at zero, at the end, they should also be at zero again. So that whatever these uh, part is, if this is the same as it uh, input and output, uh, you can regard whatever happens to them as happening to this thing, because uh, the, the global phase, you know, appear as a product of all these three states. 
so this is how the phase oracle is designed but i'll i'll discuss the in detail a little bit later so any question about uh, this setup and there can be other types of oracle for example the type of oracle that we used in simon algorithm so in the simon algorithm our oracle was like this that we had some input state which was going to the same output state but then we had a bunch of you know auxiliary input which started in zero state and this function this oracle is implemented in such a way that uh, the function f of x here is xor with zero which mean that f of x appears at the output here so this x is used by this function f to compute uh, some you know uh, quantity f of x which is appearing here and this but this x is still going to the output as it is so this is the key this 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 is the first thing that you have to make sure so don't disturb uh, these qubits you can use them to control operations on here which you should because if you're implementing a function which depends on this x so this can only be done if you have various you know control operations uh, happening with respect to these qubits okay so any question if not let me you know uh, discuss uh, the problem that was given in the midterm exam so in the mid there was this problem that you are supposed to implement this function f of x which was one for when x was one two three five or seven f of x was one and when x was zero four or six f of x is zero. so uh, which means that for five outputs we want to multiply it with minus one because minus one raised to power f is minus one when f is one so for these inputs we need a phase minus one and for these inputs we need a phase plus one now if this would have been you know a balanced operation that uh, you would have somehow uh, four combine four inputs here and four inputs here uh, you would have you know required this thing so if you have you know these three qubits so this is our x and if you were supposed to make an oracle that gives a minus sign for half of the input and plus sign for other uh, for the other half you only need one thing and that was this thing that you set this in minus uh, operation and let me you know check what uh, should have happened so if the input is 0 0 0 i require here 0 0 0 if the input is 0 0 1 we require here minus 0 0 one if the input is zero one zero it's two we again require a minus sign if it is three we still require a minus sign and if it is four we require a plus sign and if it is five we again require a minus sign and if it is six we want it as it is and if it is seven we want the minus seven. now uh there are actually two ways of you know thinking about this oracle and uh, one is that you try to implement this oracle using the toffoli uh you know gate because if let me you know come back to this thing later because if i had you know uh, this minus plus for half of the input i could have used uh, the single cx gate but since you know uh, these are different numbers of uh, uh, gate i can implement this oracle like this this is the you no know, 001 state so if i can have a toffoli gate with act and this you know state which is prepared in minus state 
like this. So this is my x. So this gate you can see will give a minus sign when the input is 0, 0, 1. Because when this is 0, 0, 1, so this is on, this is on, this is on, and this, uh, this x operation will happen, and this minus will get uh, a phase minus. Because when you know we apply this x gate on minus, this always goes to minus. Now we also want a minus sign for 0, 1, 0. So I can have another Toffoli gate, 0, 1, 0 and x k. So this will give a minus sign when the input is 0, 1, 0. But you know, when the input is 0, 1, 0, this will not do anything, right? Because 0, 1, 0 will not activate this to Foley gate. So only this will be activated. Now for the next one, it's 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and I have another Toffoli. No, and then I want a minus sign for one zero one, one zero one. Like this. Munir, uh, are you able to get what uh, I'm trying to do? Uh, yes, sir, I have uh, an idea. Okay, so. Do you understand this symbol with the, you know, this uh, circle? Uh, with the plus sign, that is a control gate or the Toffoli gate. No, no, just this symbol circle. Do you understand what this circle means? So it means that if you have one place, the control gate, it does not apply to that. It only applies to the one which is solid. Yes, so just to, you know, uh, review it you are right but let me just review it for everybody's sake you know this is a control x gate so an x is applied when this is one but if i have a control x wrapped in the control wrapped you know in two x gates so if the input is zero here this x will make it one and then this will be acted here and whatever the input is here is flipped and then, but this zero is converted, uh, this one is converted back to zero. So if it is zero here, you will get zero at the output again. And, uh, but you know, this will have acted. So this has, you know, uh, this gate has this symbol. So this is a shorthand for this thing. So when you implement it, you will actually implement it exactly like this. There's no uh, symbol in Qiskit for this thing. You will have to implement it like this. So I'm using this. Similarly, if I have a Toffoli gate, so a Toffoli gate will apply an X over here. If this is one, this is one. And, but if you want to, you know, uh, apply a Toffoli gate, uh, sorry, these are not Toffoli gate. These are like three control gate. I was calling them Toffoli, but this is actually the Toffoli gate. But if you, you know, have a gate like this, So this is still a Toffoli gate. So, but if the input is now here zero and one, this zero will be converted to one. So this is one, this is one, one, one will uh, make this X act, but this zero will, uh, this one will be converted back to zero. So at the output, this zero one goes to output as it is, but now this Toffoli gate is activated. So this has, you know, a symbol, a shorthand symbol like this. When you implement this circuit in Qiskit, you will actually implement it like this. But when I'm drawing it, you know, on paper, I'm using this symbol. Okay, so similarly, okay, before I come back here again, let me, you know, discuss one more thing uh, uh, that we have talked about again. So this is a Toffoli gate, which is essentially uh, operating with two controls. So it has the symbol CCX, or, you know, in books, sometimes it is written as C square X. So this is a gate that has, you know, two control bits and one, you know, target bits. But we can generalize this and, you know, construct gates like uh, uh, C and X. So this is, you know, uh, a gate with uh, many control bits. For example, if I 
talk about this uh, C3 gate. So this has three control bits and one target bit. So it will flip this bit if all of these, all three of these are one. But if you want to flip it, if this is zero, this is one, this is one, then instead of this dot, you can use a circle. And this gate can be constructed using uh, uh, Toffoli gates like this. Since we don't have any gate like this, we have to construct it using Toffoli gates. So this can be done like this. We will need another auxiliary bit set in zero so that I can use a Toffoli gate based on the first two and this one. No, if this is one, this is one, this zero will be converted to one. So over here, if these two are ones, this zero goes to one. And now, now if I use uh, a Toffoli gate with respect to the third and this result, then this gate will act only if this is one, this is one, this is one. And then this minus will go to, you know, minus sign. But since I made this zero uh, go to one, I will have to make it go back to zero. So I need another control gate over here. So this circuit is a shorthand notation for this actual circuit. So for this, you need two auxiliary bit and three working bit. And out of these two auxiliary bit, you know, this is your, the uh, bit that gives the phase and this starts in zero and ends in zero. There's no phase with it. So it means if you have to, you know, uh, get a minus sign with this target bit based on these first three lines, when all three are one, you actually use this gate. But when you implement in Kiskit, you implement it like this. So Manit, uh, do you get this thing? Yes, I get it. Perfect. So similarly, if you know, I have a, a gate like this that I want a phase when the input is, you know, zero, one, zero. So symbolically, I can write it like this. So this will act only when this is zero, one, zero. And then this minus will go to minus will go to your with the minus state. So this is a, a gate which I will have to build using the Foley gates like this. These three working qubit. Now I will have to have uh, another auxiliary bit. So this will you know begin in zero. So I need first uh, to you know convert this one, but I want this to be activated when this is zero. This is one. So first of all, we will have to put an X here and then an X here. So these two X's are for this hole. Similarly, for this hole, there is going to be an X here and X at the output. No, inside it works the same. Using this and this control, I can flip this zero to one. And then using this and this, I can, you know, give a phase factor to this minus state so that this goes to this minus. And then, but I flip this zero to one here, I will need to flip it back like this. And you can see that this gate will work only when this work mean that this will give a phase when this is zero, one, zero, because when this is zero, one, zero, this zero will go to one, this zero will go to one. Now this is one, so one, one will make this zero flip to one. So when, this, and this is also one because of this X gate, one, one will make this flip. For any other combination, this gate will not be activated. So this is a shorthand notation for a combination of gates that can give me a minus sign when the input is zero, one, zero. Now, if you, uh, you know, get this idea in your brain that this is a general way of how you can, you know, give minus phases to any combination that you desired, then the design of phase oracles become extremely easy. Because all you have to do now, let me go back to the uh, class problem, just see that which of the, you know, inputs have this minus phase that you want. So there are five. So in principle, I need, you know, these five uh, control gates uh, that are controlled by three inputs. So I was 
this is 0, 0, 001 so you can see 0, 0, 001 0, 010 0, 0, 010 0, 0, 011 0, 011 101 101 1, 1, 1. so this is for all three ones so it's like this so this circuit will do exactly the job that is shown in this you know tooth table But you know, there's another, uh, when you implement these three, uh, these gates with these three control bits, you know that you will need another auxiliary qubit. So it's essentially three plus two circuit. There will be three working qubit and to implement these gates, you will need another auxiliary bit uh, in the zero state. Asif, you Yes, sir. ठीक है कोई क्वेश्चन है आपके पास आसिफ uh, नहीं नहीं सर ठीक है सो नो कैन यू डिजाइन एनी फेज ऑरेकल दैट यू आर आस्क्ड टू डू फॉर एनी कंबिनेशन ऑफ इनपुट्स आई गेस सो यस परफेक्ट सो बट यू नो देयर इज वन बिग प्रॉब्लम विद द डिजाइन दैट आई हैव प्रेजेंटेड इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू इट हैज लॉट ऑफ गेट्स व्हिच यू कैन इजीली सी बिकॉज़ लाइक दीस आर थ्री uh control gates and for each three of them you have uh, uh you can see this implementation from here that these three controls are implemented with one two three tofolies and then each tofolie is implemented using three control x so these are essentially nine control x gates x a lot of noise in your you know quantum computer when you be implementing so let's see if you can you know uh so in exams and you know in your circuit if you implement this you should be okay in principle okay but when you will run it on quantum computer you will have a lot of noise but you know that's something that we are not talking too much about in this course but let's see are the tricks that you can use you know to design a better oracle than this so this is something that you know i'm now going to talk about so sure, that's sort of जी जी शो सो लाइक इसके अंदर अगर हम किसकेट के अंदर इसे इंप्लीमेंट करते हैं लाइक किसी सर्किट को तो लाइक इज देयर अ सिग्निफिकेंस फॉर यूजिंग बैरियर्स या और आर दे जस्ट फॉर आवर ओन क्लैरिटी सो बैरियर्स हैव आर जस्ट यू नो ड्राइंग टेक्निक्स दे दे आर नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द सर्किट ओ ओके सो बेसिकली हमने बस हर एक आउटपुट के लिए सेपरेटली गेट सर्किट बना के उन्हें सब कंबाइन करेंगे तो इट विल वर्क yes so there is absolutely no need of barrier barrier or just you know visualization aid theek ho gaya this helps us you know uh, divide our uh, algorithm into steps so you say okay this is my step number 1 because what happens in circuit if you know you draw a circuit like this for example you want you have a header mod you have some control x and then you have you know a header mod and doing nothing so let's say this is your uh, this is your oracle and then you know you have header mods so header mods so conceptually this is the circuit in your mind you say okay i have apply header mod transform then i apply some you know oracle then apply header mod and so on but when kiskit will draw it since you know there is no gate here this might take this h right here which is okay i mean this h is just coming after this h so it doesn't matter where you you know draw it uh, but if you you know put these barriers then uh, kiskit when it will be drawing the circuit will be drawing this header mod after this barrier so it's easier to visualize so these barriers just visualization aids okay sir thank you okay so any other question excuse me sir Mm -hmm. uh, could you please show that circuit which you implemented for the for the question? Yes, this green one. Uh, at at mm -hmm. qubit zero, we have three circles, so we have to put x gates. So an x at the beginning and an and an x at the end will work. Or we have to put x after each and every circle. So right now, you know. when i will implement this there is going to be an x here and x here 
Similarly, for this, there will be an X here and then, you know, dot and X. But, you know, when you actually make the circuit, you can cancel out those axes. Should be okay. Okay, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Because we know X square is I. Yes, sir. But then, you know, if you, uh, if you have a functional mind, so many people, especially those people who become, you know, a little bit expert in programming, they think about programs as uh, part of, you know, subroutine. So you collect different small routines and then bunch them together. So hopefully in the far future, when we will not be worrying about number of quantum gates and uh, noise, et cetera. So then I can just write a routine uh, that implements uh, an, uh, uh, a control gate with n uh, control bits on this thing and then you know whatever oracle that i have to implement i'll be uh, you know calling in those routines for you know these inputs and all of these things would be arranged but since nowadays we are still worried about uh, noise so it's better to you know first draw this circuit for each one of them and see which one you know of the gates cancel out so that you have minimum number of gates in your quantum computer Perfect. So let me, you know, present an alternative way of uh, thinking about this design, which is more NISCI. So, and this NISCI is actually, by the way, the term that is used by a lot of people. So let's consider a NISCI design. NISCI means that it's suitable for a noisy intermediate scale quantum computer that we have nowadays. So let me, you know, draw the truth table here again. So zero zero is zero 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 one is minus zero zero one zero one zero is zero one zero zero one one zero one one zero zero one zero zero one zero one So you see, five of the inputs have uh, a minus sign. If I had only, you know, four inputs uh, with a minus sign and four with a positive sign, I wouldn't be needing uh, more complicated, uh, you know, uh, or a, uh, more complicated circuits using uh, the Foley gates. Because we know that if we have uh, uh, an oracle like this, that a bunch of, you know, working qubits, and only one auxiliary qubit, if I prepare any combination of uh, control axis, uh, something like this, right? So a circuit like this, or you can have different combination, you can put a control here, at maybe X here and so on. So these types of uh, uh, Oracle, they always give a ne uh, phase, negative phase for half of the input, and positive phase for the other half of the input. So, and this is much simple. So let's see, can I uh, use a trick like this? That uh, let me see that first I design a circuit that only give a negative phase for half of the input. And then only one would be left. And I will then, you know, add that somehow later on. So for that, let's for, for now eliminate, uh, you know, uh, one of the minus sign. And suppose I eliminate this one. So for now, imagine that I want to convert, uh, make an oracle that give a negative sign for this, 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 and this only. And let's not worry about this one for now. We'll add this thing later. So if I want an oracle for this, and I look at it, I see that uh, I need to have a minus sign when this first qubit is one. So this is one, this is one, this is one, and this is one. So I need a minus sign anytime the last qubit is one, right? Is there any other thing that I have to worry about? The second qubit in this case is one, one, uh, one here, zero here, one here, one here, zero here. Uh, zero. So second qubit can be anything. Even the Last qubit is, you know, here it is one, one, 
वन जीरो जीरो सो लेट्स फर्स्ट सी इफ आई हैव अ सर्कट लाइक दिस so when will this give me a negative phase this will give me negative phase whenever this is 1 and this is 1 for numbers 1 3 5 and 7 right because all these numbers have this last bit as 1 there's no other number this is for now this is 0 and i need positive this is 0 i need positive this is 0 i need for this is so you see this circuit will add a negative phase for all these things one this this and this and now i have to uh, only add a circuit in series that can give me a negative sign for this term that i left out and for that let me just add you know uh, a 0 10 multi control circuit so 0 1 0 like this now for this circuit this i can implement like this x and now i will need an auxiliary with zero so this is just this x and let's implement this circuit this is going to be a circuit like this so now this one this one this x and then this one this one and this and this to flip this zero back to uh, this zero to one and one to zero back and then And x gate next you see this is a circuit that will do the job because this part will <coughs> so, so. so this part will add phase to every term with a one uh, with a one on the last bit and this part will add a minus sign when the input is this because when the input is this no phase is going to be added by the first part so this gate will add a phase for this input and this circuit you know is much more efficient uh, in terms of number of gates than the one that we talked about earlier so asif uh, you are able to see that why this circuit will work Munir, you? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So, any question from anybody else or anyone in the class? so evidently the uh, design of oracle is one of the you know complicated thing uh, to do uh, in quantum computing and hopefully that this exposure will make things uh, you know much easier for all of you but if there is any question about phase oracle or any confusion or anything uh, maybe any comment please do let me know before we move on to the next problem okay so if not uh, we will now discuss uh, uh, problem number 3 which is grover algorithm with input with initialization to one one state 
instead of zero step. So we are saying that we initialize our global algorithm to this one state instead of zero and see how it will uh, work out with the diffusion operator given by this. So let's get to this after you know a 10 minutes uh, break, then we will solve this problem. So it's uh, 2.52 right now. So let's begin uh, at about uh, uh, 3.2. Okay, so uh, now we will discuss the Grover algorithm in detail, but with a, a different, uh, you know, input and a different diffuser. So let me re-sketch the Grover algorithm. So we start with our input state in a certain state, and we apply the Hadamard transform. And then we apply the Grover uh, oracle, which is, you know, a phase oracle. And uh, uh, it gives a negative phase uh, for, for those inputs, for those combination of input for which uh, uh, it's a solution. So if I draw it separately, this UF works like this. So if the input state is X, the output is, you know, minus one power F of X, X where uh, this F of X is one. If this X is a solution or if, if, if this X is what we are looking for and F of X is zero, if uh, X is something that we are not looking for. So I'm not going to draw this auxiliary bit here. So it's already assumed to be present here. So the uh, algorithm is the same as we discussed it with the, the inputs initialized to zero. And right now we will analyze it if all the inputs are initialized to one. And then we have uh, another Hadamard transform. And then we have uh, another uh, oracle, which is this time I'm going to call it U of one. So when we studied it earlier, we call it U of zero because this U of one is doing this thing. That it's uh, marking one state and not doing anything to any other state. So that's why let's call it U of one. It's a fixed oracle and it's independent of solution. And then we have had our marks again. And the question was, will this algorithm work the same way as it worked with when we initialized the states to zero and we had uh, uh, an oracle here, which was UF naught with the, uh, which was marking the zero state. Or, you know, UF naught, it's equivalent to marking everything else and not zero are marking zero and uh, doing nothing to everything else because that's you know equivalent to a negative phase. For example, this can be equivalent written as minus two one minus i. So this means that you are not doing anything else, uh, anything to any other state except one state which you are uh, giving a minus sign. So this two appears because there's a one one state inside identity. So one one minus two one one will be, you know, single minus one one. So if you neglect this thing, this means the opposite, that you are changing sign of every state except the one state. So uh, these two things are equivalent. So let's now uh, analyze this thing and uh, we will do it in the same fashion that uh, we will call this the, let's say diffuser V and uh, we will analyze it in the same steps. Let's start from here. So initial state now 
initial state, let's call it psi naught is this one state. And the state right after the header merge was formed is now one over n square root sum over x from zero to n minus one, where n is two power two n. And I have minus one raised to power x, x. So basically this is x dot one. So this is what it should be. But this one has every element as one, one, one. So x dot one is nothing but x. So I can write it one over n square root for simplicity from x zero to n minus one, minus one power x. Now again, as we did last time, let's imagine that this state is, you know, zero, 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 minus zero, zero, one, plus zero, zero, one, zero, and so on. And there is a state minus one power W, which is our solution, and then everything else. And, you know, this could, there could be a minus sign here, a plus sign here, depending on the exact index of W. So what we can now do is call all of this number some W prime, and I can now break up my psi one, which is, uh, which we call S state last time. So let's keep it calling S state. So I can break it up into two parts. So one is one over N square root, X not equal to W minus one power X, X plus a W prime. So I'm, you know, separating it out of this sum. And uh, again, uh, sorry, there's a one over n square root here. So we can normalize this state because this has no n minus one term. So let's put an n minus one here and n minus one here. So this becomes n minus one over n square root. There's n minus one, x not equal to w minus one power x plus one over n square root w prime. So this is a state which is perpendicular to W prime because all of these, uh, you know, X states are orthogonal to this state because this is, you know, superposition of orthogonal basis state. So each one of them is orthogonal to everything else. So this is orthogonal to all other. So the combination of everything else other than this is still orthogonal to this W. So let's call this, uh, you know, some W perpendicular state and this is this state. Now, uh, we can again picture it in the same way. Let's say this is some angle, you know, if I think of this X state, S state as a state in this, uh, some sigma plane where this side is W prime and this side is W perpendicular. So this has some angle. Uh, so let's actually make this perpendicular and this prime. So there's, let's say angle alpha here. So I can call this as cosine alpha and I can call this sine alpha like this. Now, uh, some of you, you know, were confused by this minus sign and you said, okay, there will be a minus sign here. So there could or there could not be, that depends on W prime. So an easier way to avoid confusion is this, that you, you can lump everything into this state W. And then the, that sign problem is gone. And after this, it's actually the same problem as before. So we can picture that this W prime, uh, this you know vector S has an angle alpha with the W perpendicular part and uh, angle 90 minus alpha with the W prime part, which is our solution. Now, all we have to do now is figure out if the uh, diffuser will work the same way. So I have this uh, diffuser, and I'm at I minus two, one, one, and I'm at, and again, so this comes to here, this becomes Adam R square minus two, Adam R on one, and uh, and I'm on. So there's 
this tensor n doesn't matter you write or not if you know if you remember that this is the state so this is identity and uh, this is still s state so this is still s so this becomes minus 2 s s so our diffuser also kind of looked the same as it did uh, uh, for the case when we had initialized it to zero zero state and from from this onward you can actually work it in exactly the same fashion because this s is defined exactly the same way as it was before and uh, you can check that when you uh, apply the sorry i forgot to apply one part here when we had this s state we had to apply this this grower oracle before we are able to apply this uh, diffuser. So let's apply the oracle on S. So for S, when we apply the oracle UF, so this actually changes the sign only for this state because it will not change the sign for this state. This is the solution. So this becomes cos alpha minus sine alpha. So in the same way, this is, you know, reflected on the other side and still making alpha. So this is my state as prime. And now let's call it as prime. And once we apply this diffuser V to S prime, this will in the same fashion go to, uh, there's going to be a minus sign here because I have defined it I minus this. So if I def if I had defined it as uh, you know two one one minus i uh, just like the one we did before, there's uh, it's going to be like this cosine three alpha omega perpendicular plus sine three alpha omega prime. So the this angle alpha increases to three alpha. And this is what our state V S prime is. And this angle additional is now two alpha. The way I have defined here, there might be a minus sign here, okay? But uh, uh, that uh, that's not going to be affecting the results. The only thing is that you can picture it with, because of the minus sign that instead of, you know, this side, it might be thought of on this side where both of the components are minus. But the important thing is that this vector would still be, you know, going towards the solution axis. It doesn't matter if you know, if it is here, or if it is here. Okay, so from here, we can see that the Grover algorithm works exactly the same way as uh, uh, when initialized with the zero zero state. We can initialize it with one one state and it will still work the same. The only trouble is this, that when we initialize with one, 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 this oracle would be less efficient, as you can see, because uh, here I will have to mark the one, one state. Uh, no, actually this would be more efficient than the previous one. Because if you remember this UF1, we implemented like this. So UF0 was, this or with the minus sign you can write it like this and this may actually mean that we will have to mark the zero zero state and we marked it with a multi-control gate like this right if you check the program for example if this x is three bit then this was the gate and this is equal to you know an x gate X <laughs> so there are these six X gates but if we implement this diffuser uh, with this uh, uf1 function uf1 is uh, i minus two one one which is you know which has this circuit 
exactly like this. But you know, the difference is not too much because the six gates as compared to these nine, the fully gates that will be needed to implement this central part is still too much, but there is, you know, an extremely small advantage uh, in using this instead of this. If we use the uh, UF1 instead of UF0 operator uh, in the diffuser. Okay, so any question uh, about this uh, problem? Perfect. So if not, uh, uh, this concludes the solution of the midterm exam.